This here is a perfectly healthy and working system, and we're about to really mess it up. And the reason is this post here from the PCMR Instagram page. Yeah, it looks like someone in their subreddit did an oopsie. Most of us know that thermal paste belongs on top of the CPU, but that hasn't stopped some folks from spreading it underneath, which is cringy to say. And I wanna know in this video if it's possible to clean and restore a socket that has been trashed by Thermal Compound. Shout out to Thermal Grizzly. They actually make really good stuff. And that's why I wanted to show this system working at the beginning of this one because, well, it won't be working in just a few moments. Raymond's gonna do the honors. Stay with me. If you're sick of seeing that same Activate Windows watermark over and over, head on over to VIP SCD Key, where they have Windows 10 and 11 Pro OEM keys at a fraction of the price of retail. Just see the secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say bye-bye to the watermark. And be sure to use your offer code SKGS for that sweet discount. We're not using the truck this time. <laughs> we can't run it over? So without further ado, and yes, in case you're wondering, I am slightly cringing inside. Let's get this platform powered off. So there she goes. Hopefully we can uh, bring it back to life momentarily. And just for reference, yes, the socket looks pretty much brand new. It won't look that way in a few seconds, but uh, I think you get a close up. You can see all of our pins are in the correct places. Now this is slightly different than the picture from PCMR because uh, obviously this is an Intel socket and not an AMD one. So we actually have a bunch of resistors packed into the center of this thing. But uh, even if these get a bit of thermal paste in there, I think we'll be able to still clean it. And I'll show you how, of course, in this video. You sure you, uh, you, sure you wanna do this? Uh, not really. I'd <laughs> almost rather use the truck. <laughs> all right. All right. Here we go. Come on. <laughs> Stop. The, the cap is still on it. Well, yeah, that's what I was asking. <laughs> Ew. Do it, do it over the pins too. Yeah, there you go. Just get it all over. This is not going as well as it was supposed to go, Raymond. What, what is, what, what is, what, 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 what are you, what are you doing? This is not. <laughs> It's okay, it's okay, it'll, uh, it, it, it spreads once you put the CPU in, right? Oh boy. Right, um, okay. <laughs> so, a little different looking than the PCMR post, but we'll make it work. Oh, this is so cringe. I can see, like, residue from the paste just lingering on other pins. Now, we've, uh, we've loaded them up with, what is, wow, I cannot, I cannot do camera work today. Uh, another one, yep, shout out to Thermal Grizzly, and, uh, it's not focusing, but, it's thermal grizzly paste, I promise. So let's go ahead and round two it up here, Raymond. All right. Give it some go. juice. Now, we don't want to go overboard here because I do definitely think that with enough paste, we're going to be ab Do you? Oh, okay. I thought you had the cap on still. You know, you really suck at thermal paste application. You know I've got to say, this is the worst. The, the, the <laughs> right. So, um, all right. This, this, this looks awful and perfect at the same time. You did this. If we can't fix this, I'm docking your pay. <laughs> so now comes the fun part, smushing it all with the CPU and uh, closing the socket lever. So that, that's also your job. Oh. Yeah. Great. Just set, just, yeah, set it right in there. Aren't you glad that we work together, Raymond? You, you get to do stuff like this. Yeah, just oh, God. try your best not to. Yeah, okay, perfect. No, well, as perfect as we can get it, at least. Is it lined up? It's like it's sitting so high because there's so much paste underneath it. Oh yeah, just smush it all in there. There you go. All right, now that uh, that bracket. Yep, that's. Oh boy. Yes. Oh boy. This is gonna be a little more force than. Oh, that's so cringe. Oh god. Okay. We're hurting inside. It's definitely a, an eerie sight because at first glance you wouldn't think anything was wrong with this picture, but. We all know what's going on behind the scenes. Now we're not gonna be turning the system on with the paste underneath here. Of course, we know what's gonna happen there. Either the motherboard explodes because, you know, paste, some paste at least is conductive, or at least it doesn't post, it doesn't power on. We're not interested in how it's going to behave. If we tried something like that, we're more interested in what the socket looks like and if it is recoverable. I probably just made it worse just then. Ooh, it's like, it's like stuck, dude. It's like glued. Oh, this is, this is awful. Oh boy. Oh boy. Um, 
You know, I'm kind of surprised. I don't feel like the pins are all that bent. It looks like someone just like took a thermal paste dump like right in the center of the sock. Am I the only one thinking that? Now, believe it or not, I only need two things to clean this, at least based on prior experience. Alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. I shouldn't, yeah, don't dump like Corona or Bud Light in there. Isopropyl alcohol, IPA. 99% or above is recommended. And I've got some nylon bristle brushes. These are pretty soft. They're not gonna harm the socket as long as we're not like applying a crazy amount of force. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's all we need. Let's get to it. It starts with a proper isopropyl alcohol bath. Now I'm gonna be using a lot here, and I know this is cringy to some of you, but uh, we're just gonna literally drown the socket in IPA. Just keep going, keep going. No, I'm not joking. This is not intended to be a meme. All of this will evaporate within seconds to minutes. And now I'm gonna take one of these brushes and I'm gonna gently brush in the direction of the pins. Now this could vary depending on the side of the socket that you're starting from. And I'm gonna try to brush as much of this thermal paste away from the edges of the socket. Every now and then grab a towel, dry that brush off, and then have at it again. Being sure not to apply too much force, we don't want these pins to bend. Guess I should also deal with this massive poop stain in the middle. See if we can scoop that out without getting it everywhere. There we go. And a little more has lingered, but again, we can get this up with more IPA. The quality of my brushes uh, is not great, which is why some of these bristles are lingering. They shouldn't hurt anything. I'm just gonna keep at it, applying more IPA, continuing to brush. And in no time, we'll have a clean socket. Now, if you're working with an LGA AMD socket where you don't have a sort of like pull in here in the middle without pins, what I suggest doing is pushing a lot of that thermal paste to the sides of the socket. It's really the only way you're gonna be able to get a lot of this paste out of here. Uh, and then once it's off to the side, surrounding the socket here on the PCB, we'll be able to wipe it up with a paper towel, and then we can dry it with an electric duster or just a can of air. And here's an extra tip. I like to use a sewing needle if I need to run between pins and a land grid array, or if I need to scoop something out, uh, for example, these little nylon bristles. This is a great, I just realized I, I just bent a pin doing that because I ripped it out way too quickly. All right, so here's an example of how this could help. This one pin here is bent. I'm gonna take this needle. I'm gonna work on pushing it down. This was totally self-inflicted, by the way. It actually looks like the remainder of this socket is in okay shape, despite being mutilated by thermal paste. It is a very delicate procedure. Please do take your time. Alrighty, so, uh, so far looking a lot better. I'm actually confident we could get the system to post as is, but you can see the socket is still not totally clean. So we're gonna continue applying more isopropyl alcohol and continuing to brush. And as a bit of a cheat sheet, I'm going to use my electric duster. And you can see by accelerating the evaporation of the IPA, uh, exactly where we stand with the socket. So it looks like most of the pins themselves are clean again. In fact, the, the, the residue that you're seeing there is what has kind of just lodged itself underneath uh, on the base of the socket. Uh, but if we still apply IPA, 
eventually that should come up too. Just making sure most of these pins are straight before we call it. There is a bit of residue that I just haven't been able to get out. This is worse than I've had to deal with in the past. I think it's because the CPU was fully slotted and secured with the bracket uh, and it's just so far recessed inside of here. I don't want to risk bending any pins to get the remainder of this out. Now, the important thing is, so long as the paste itself is not thermally conductive, this is okay. As long as the pins are making proper contact with the pads at the bottom of the chip. I know obviously this is an AMD CPU, but uh, you can see these pads need to be free of debris. And of course the pins that correspond to these pads should also be cleaned. Now for the CPU side of things, I'm just going to get a paper towel damp with IPA. And I'm gonna scrub carefully along the pads since we don't have to mind any pins here. You can see it looks like I have made things worse, but we really need to remove a lot of this material from the underside of the chip. And so that's why I'm trying to scrub it away versus smear it, kind of like what we were doing in the socket. See, there we really had no choice, but here we can uh, finesse things just a bit more. Another good wipe there. And what I think we're gonna do now is switch to spraying the isopropyl and getting the rest up with a Q-tip. So I suppose for this part, you'll need a little more than just you know, isopropyl and some brushes. Q-tips will come in super handy here, as is the case for motherboard cleaning. We'll take a few of these, set them to the side, and then we're gonna get the entire underside of the CPU soaked with isopropyl. Again, not a big deal, because this stuff will evaporate in no time. I'm gonna take a Q-tip, and I'm gonna gently roll it as I scrub across the pads. Notice that I'm not actually dealing with the center yet, because that's gonna require um, me to be a bit more careful than how I'm being now. I'm gonna flip this over, get a fresh piece. I'm gonna go back over the pads. And we're just soaking up that thermal paste along the way. And then for the center here, I'm not applying a lot of force. I don't wanna dislodge any of these small SMDs that would pretty much be end game for a chip like this. So I'm being very gentle. I'm just kind of dabbing and then sliding across to the edge of the chip, trying to get as much of this thermal paste out from the crevices. Right now we have made this chip uh, about as clean as we can get it. You can see the underside there. It's nearly spotless, just tiny, tiny little bits of thermal paste that uh, we could probably get up if we spent even more time on this, but uh, it's already been about 20 or 30 minutes just on the CPU to get it looking this way. I also wanna note that uh, if you're not uh, you know, privy to using an electric duster, you could use a can of air, or you could just allow the chip to set out for a few hours so that all the isopropyl alcohol evaporates before reinstalling into your motherboard. I've been carefully adjusting some of these pins. It actually turns out there were several just slightly bent pins that I couldn't see uh, from my perspective. And I know that most of those came from, they had to have come from the thermal paste uh, because I saw the ones that I physically messed up. There were about two or three of those. But all in all, there were about 12 that needed to be adjusted and I've gotten them as close as I can get to factory without risking any of these snapping. Because again, if one of these snaps, the board is basically a brick. So yeah, again, absolutely not perfect, but I do think the system's gonna work now. So uh, without further ado, let's fire it up and see if Raymond killed the board permanently or not. Alrighty, this is what we're gonna go with. And we're just gonna drop it back into the socket, which yes, I know is not totally clean. This is obviously not something we advise any of you do, but we just are trying to prove here that it is Reparable, and uh, now we power on. Is, is it repar- it's rep repairable. You guys know what I mean, whatever. It, yeah, English is my strong suit. And here we go. I am slightly nervous. We've made a bit of a mess up here. I'm hoping it works, because if it doesn't, well, back to the drawing board. I'm gonna jump the two power pins. I'm gonna jump the two power pins. Okay, that was interesting. I know I jumped the power pins first time, just didn't want to power on. Uh, looks like one of our memory mod. Did you slot this one? Yeah. Interesting. I'm gaslighting Raymond right now. All right, here we go. Power on again. Come on. There it is. Raymond is shocked. 
And uh, what you saw, the socket wasn't even totally clean, and we've still got a successful post here. Now, uh, please mind the CPU temps because I actually don't have this cooler fastened down. We just wanted to make sure that it powered on. And uh, again, the important thing I wanna stress here is whether or not your thermal paste is conductive. Most paste today is not going to be conductive. And since we're using a Thermal Grizzly product for this video, it's important to note that their own carbon pads and cryo sheets are also electrically conductive. So just be careful if you use them. Same goes for liquid metal if you're using that instead of thermal paste. Now I did lie a bit earlier. It took a tad more than just isopropyl and some nylon brushes to... <laughs> I've been sniffing this all afternoon, okay? So, <clears throat> just be gentle with me. This stuff comes in really handy. Uh, it didn't totally clean the inside of the socket, but as we've just proven, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure that the pins themselves are thoroughly clean so that they're making good contact with the pads on the underside of the CPU. And maybe use some better quality brushes than what I've got here. These things fray worse than my cat. I cannot believe how loose a lot of these are. So don't worry, my friend, although this is super cringy to witness in person or even worse than that, to actually be the cause of, it is still repairable, reparable. One of those two. If you haven't subscribed already, get subscribed, leave a comment down below, consider liking the video, and stay tuned for the next one. My name's Greg, thanks for cringing with me. We're gonna go with that one.